Hello, it's Labor Day 2024 and it's a beautiful day outside here in North Wales, Pennsylvania. I hope you had a nice holiday and if you had to work, I hope you made some extra money. Or as a friend of mine used to say, a bundle of dough. He'd say it in a sing-song voice. You'd ask him, hey Gene, did you work the holiday? And he would say, yes, I made a bundle of dough. A bundle of dough. Anyway, this is a continuation of my first video about a perpetual motion machine. Now I'm using the term perpetual motion very loosely. If you throw a stick into outer space, it'll tumble perpetually. Just about everything in outer space is moving perpetually. But in the last video, we used a long wire antenna and a coil from a crystal radio to power this little flower pot. Now it hardly did it at all, but it did make the bee move. And as long as there's a radio station on the air, the bee will move perpetually. In this video, we've got a double coil power supply using two long wire antennas to improve the performance. Don't expect very much, it hardly improved it at all. This is our improved perpetual motion machine. It doesn't seem to be that much of an improvement. This meter is measuring the current that the little bee is drawing and you'll see it jump up. Right there, it went up to 37 microamperes right before the pulse caused the bee to move. Now sometimes, depending on which way he's swinging back and forth, the pulse will actually stop him, but then the next pulse starts him back up again. I think I'll put the flower pot back together and play some more Vangelis, because everybody everywhere almost never doesn't dislike Vangelis. So here's our improved setup. We've got two long wire antennas going into two identical crystal sets or I should just say two identical coils. We have antenna 1, coil 1, output 1. Antenna 2, coil 2, output 2. The outputs each go to their own voltage quadruplers. The outputs of the voltage quadruplers are in parallel. I found that you cannot put them in series because they share a common ground if you try to connect the negative side of one voltage quadrupler to the positive side of the other, all you do is short them out. Here's a close-up of our two voltage multipliers or voltage quadruplers. I'm going to put this screwdriver here to separate them. This is the first input to the first quadrupler and this is the second input to the second quadrupler. Now, notice that I didn't use the electrolytics on this one. I found that you don't need to use them. These are 10 microfarads. These are 0 0.47. If you go with the smaller value capacitors, you can actually connect a pair of headphones to this output and use it as a traditional crystal radio. Is the volume in the headphones four times louder? Well, I'm sorry to report that no, it's not. As a matter of fact, I could hardly hear any difference in the volume whatsoever. We've got a small trickle of energy coming in from the antenna and the coil into the first quadrupler. The output of the first quadrupler is in parallel with the output of the second quadrupler. And here's the input to the second one. You can't put the two coils in series because they share a common ground. And you can't put them in parallel because putting the coils in parallel will change the inductance of the two coils. Each of these coils is about equal putting them in parallel would cause the value of the inductance to fall by about 50%. So if these are 240 microhenry, putting them in parallel would give you 120 microhenry. And it's probably way up at the top of the AM broadcast band and it would be counterproductive to what we're trying to do here. The only way I found I could connect these two coils together is to put a crystal diode on the output of each one, thereby making two identical crystal sets. Then take the output of those diodes and tie them together and feed them into a single voltage multiplier. However, that seemed to be detrimental for some reason. And I think it's because I'm using two different antennas that are pointing in two different directions. Now I'll show you the two long wire antennas. We're in the upstairs of a garage. So the antennas come out the window and there's the first one. That's about 60 feet long. And then this other one I put up there this morning, or yesterday morning. And it's only half as long, and it's pointing in a different direction, and it doesn't work as well. You see that rope? I tied a rock to that rope and threw it up in the branch. And not only did I miss the branch, but the rock got stuck up in the tree. Now that's a piece of clothesline, so it's designed to last outside for a long time. 
That'll be up there for 20 years unless some squirrel gnaws on it and knocks the rock down. Well, I don't intend to be alive in 20 years, so I'll be looking at that rope literally for the rest of my life. Hey, maybe it'll bring back some, some happy memories. Let's see if we can see where it's stuck. Well, it's stuck up there somewhere. Another thing I tried was to use a single crystal set with both antennas. Unfortunately, connecting the antennas together like this has just created a V-shaped antenna since the wires are pointing in two different directions. V-shaped antennas are very directional, and in my case, they're pointing in the wrong direction. Except for KYW, most of the broadcasts around here come from the Roxborough section of Philadelphia, and my V-shaped antenna is pointing away from there. I actually get less reception by putting the two antennas together than I do with either one individually. When you connect the two antennas together, you get this V configuration. Unfortunately, this V is pointing 90 degrees in the wrong direction. Now let's see if we can get this thing back together so we can listen to some Vangelis. Now, how did this go? This one has the linkage on it. I can't remember which one came out first. Um, I'll put Fat Boy in here first. Then I'll put this guy back. I got a lot of very nice comments from the last video and some good suggestions. Now, I'm not going to list all the suggestions, but I'll list what I think are the top three. Now, one person pointed out that this entire setup is completely unnecessary. All we actually need is a real crystal set, a decent antenna, and a pair of headphones, which is basically like every crystal set, right? As long as the radio is tuned to a station, the diaphragms in the headset will be vibrating back and forth creating motion virtually perpetually. The only problem is I think that might be a little bit hard to see in there. Now another person suggested that we go to ferret rod coil forms which are much more efficient. But I think the simplest and easiest and most elegant solution was to put a supercapacitor across the solar cell. During the day, the sun would charge the capacitor, and during the night, the capacitor would run the flower pot. Now, I don't have a supercapacitor, but I've got this. This is 10,000 microfarads. There's no way this little solar thing is going to charge this capacitor. So, we'll move to a larger solar panel. We'll connect the solar panel, the capacitor, and the flower pot together, 
and see if we do not have a perpetual motion machine. All right, let's see how this solar cell and capacitor idea works. I've got the solar cell and some clip leads on it. We'll clip onto the capacitor and then we'll clip onto the flower pot. Well, it's going. It's speeding up. It's going even faster. Holy smokes. This is unbelievable. Look at it going. What's going on up here? Mom, I got stung by a bee. Don't you lie to me. And I told you to take down these wires. I didn't use the wires. A guy on YouTube told me to use a capacitor. <laughs> a guy on YouTube told you? I can't get you to clean your room, but you do what a guy on YouTube tells you? Ow! 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 No! Mom! Ow! 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 I really like that capacitor idea. Unfortunately, the 10,000 microfarad capacitor that I have isn't going to hold enough charge to power that flower pot the whole night. I don't have a super capacitor, but what I do have are one of these, also from the dollar store. It's a little light. When it gets dark out, the light goes on. Now suppose we take this apart and take out the LEDs and connect it to the flower pot. We'll set this next to the flower pot all day, it'll charge the battery, and when it gets dark out, instead of the LEDs going on, it will power the flower pot. The only question I have is, will there be enough juice in the AAA battery to power the flower pot all night? Another variable is the flower pot itself. Some of them work a lot better than others. This one was on our windowsill and it really works well. We're going to connect this flower pot to our free radio energy device and see if we get better performance out of it. I went up on eBay and typed in solar powered desk ornament and I was amazed at all the different types they have. You can get hula girls, snowmen, cartoon characters. They even have Wallace and Gromit and I ordered one of the Wallace ones because my daughter's a Wallace and Gromit fan. So let's hook this up and see if we get some better performance. I don't know what kind of solder that is but it didn't want to melt and it hardly moves at all. Another failed experiment. Let's help it. I can see the voltage going up in the meter, then it drops down, it comes back up, it drops down. That means it's pulsing the coil, but apparently there's not enough juice in it to make the darn thing move. Perpetual non-motion. That thing was so dead I was afraid I broke it. So I put it back together and put it in the sun and you can see that it's really moving. It looks like it's trying to fly away. Well I think you can see here that the weak link in the chain is the antenna system. I need a better antenna. Have you ever seen a picture of an antenna from a hundred years ago from the 1920s? Big long four wire affairs, each wire separated by a spacer up on big towers? Well suppose we had four 100 foot spools of wire and we made four antennas of the exact same length, all pointing in the exact same direction. Each one would come into its own ferret rod coil and then go to its own voltage multiplier. And if that wasn't enough, you could do it again. You could rig it up in a couple hours. Well, you can see that you can get obsessed with this, so I'm not going to do that. But thanks for watching this video, and as I said before, I hope you have a perpetually good day. Bye. Wait, I almost forgot. I did connect the flower pot to the little solar powered tea light. Now here it's running off the battery because the lights are out. I put it on the windowsill and let it run all night long and the next morning it was still going strong. I realized I may have made a mistake here. 
I used a fully charged upgraded battery in the little solar powered tea light. And the flower pot may have run off that battery for weeks, just like the battery in a clock. So I took that out and put the original battery, which was dead, back into the tea light. These are from the dollar store, so these batteries are probably all rejects from some Chinese battery company. I put the flower pot in the sun, and after about 20 seconds, it came to life. So I covered up the solar cell with this tin can, and it still seemed to be working. Back on the window, so with the dead battery, there was no motion from the flower pot. So I put it out in the sun for exactly 10 minutes. Now remember, this is the junky battery that it came with. Well, that 10 minute charge ran the flower pot for over two hours. So I think we've got some potential here. If you lived in a place where the sun came in the window so most of the day, or if you lived in a part of the world where it was sunny most of the day, you could have a flower pot that moved perpetually, a perpetual motion machine. No actual solar powered flower pots were harmed making this video.